To the back podcast for Monday, the 31st of May 2021. I am Nick Richardson, and today I'm joined by Gus Ronald and no Peter Burns today. Peter is on holidays. William Yates. Let's start with little Will. Hey, buddy. I was gonna say the Twixman, like to to bring down the Woodsman to like a smaller the level. That's uh, not okay. Will. You need Believe to pull yourself <laughs> up. Come on, yeah. This is more. You're more than a All twig, right. and we say this to you at least on a weekly basis. <laughs> uh, of course, Pete is away. Pete and Steph are away uh, for the first half of this week, and so Will is stepping in not only as co-host but is running the show on the ones and twos in the background. So, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I have faith in you, but I do go. If anything goes wrong, it's fine. If anything goes wrong with Pete, it's like an issue. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. have we made the right choice mm. starting a company with him? But with you, you, like, you're still learning this piece of software. So uh, it's yeah, we'll cute when you, if you want to make a little blunder halfway yeah, through, if anything, it'll be super endearing for everyone here because yeah. you're such a little twig. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds derogatory. I shouldn't use that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, good. And Gus, uh, Gus, sorry, I was wait- I was waiting for the little tweak to say something and he just sort of smiled. No, no. Gus, uh, <laughs> how are you doing? How was your weekend? I'm good. I'm tired. I played a lot of COD. We were just talking about that before because um, I'm very good at it. And so mm. I've decided that <laughs> we need to play more together. Uh, and yeah, just so, but it's not so we can play as two people playing well together. It's so no. you can see how good I am. I need approval. Yeah, I'm not getting enough me. from my random rotating teammates. I need someone to witness me. Uh, while I play, so I yeah. will what about say you? that it is a it is a big issue with Call of Duty that your teammates never acknowledge how good you are because I too <laughs> am very good at Call of Duty and they never go, "Wow, thanks, Nick, for really drawing us back for the break there," or yeah. "Hey, that was really good." It's always just if you do something wrong, they hate you, but no one ever praises you for for the good shit. Well, then I get really excited when I get play the game at the end. Because I'm like, finally, they can see that really good thing I did. But I realize how frustrated I get every time I have to watch someone else's that's not mine. So I realize mm. my whole team is watching that going, it's not me. I don't care about this guy who like managed to get a full kill streak. So, yeah, these are the problems that kept me up all weekend. Uh, good. Well, my only other I... problem being that you're just not sitting in the center of your frame, which is purely a visual yeah, thing, not a podcast <laughs> thing. But, you know, <clears throat> we go think... through this and then you slouch to the side. Hang on. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. And there this, should, this should fix all of our problems. There we go. Done. Uh, Will okay, and good. I are just off center now. Yeah. We'll go Will, are side. you ready to do this? Uh, yeah, I can be. Yeah. Not before we small talk about your weekend. You had a love. You, you had a big mm. fun getaway. Yeah, yeah. Went away. Went away with some. Uh, uh, I mean, they're friends, but mainly my partner's friends. Um. Uh, and I don't know why I needed to preface that. I think I that, know, but I'm like, it's already yeah. that level of. That's a gust thing to say. It's fine. Then I'll watch it. Um. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but there was just tons of kids. We we got a really big house, and uh, there were 17 people staying there, and 11 kids. Uh. So nice. it was just uh. It was in some ways chaotic, but it was actually like most of the time our children, we just didn't see them, um, which was which was quite a nice change. Life. So, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a good weekend. Uh, but I'm happy to be back and I'm excited to get into the news because, well, it's not going to break itself. Did it break? It's already off to a good start. It did not break, <laughs> and that is in large part because the news is brought to you by Tim, and Tim would never let the news break. As usual, uh, Hero Pocketeer Tim from the Learn Programming Academy. Get your exclamation mark Tims out in the chat because the Learn Programming Academy offers classes covering the entire range of programming that are easy to watch for all skill levels, and they're almost all $20 or less. Head to lpa.dev forward slash back pocket to download the custom back pocket info guide on everything Tim has to offer and become the coding genius you didn't know you always were. Uh, Angus has a question. No, I mean, Tim needs to let the news break. The slip up there being t- something that Tim will yes. never let break is the news. I'm like, mm. if that happened, we'd never move forward. This would be a real, we'd be stuck in limbo just perpetually talking about how great Tim is, which I'm sure would be great for Tim. But for people who came in to hear the news, this could be, you know, like torture. That's a very good point. I, I will argue, though, that I think that uh, I would say. 80% of the news that I, and I'm talking about real news, not video game news, uh, that I read, uh, I did not need to know. 
Um, yeah. And I don't think most people needed to know. Uh, so if Tim could, if K- Tim could do something where it filters that stuff out and only gives me the really important stuff, then I'll give him more than twenty one dollars. I'll take the important stuff and in lighter news, that stuff <laughs> as well. This many kittens were saved from a, a flaming bus crash. I'll be like, that's the stuff. I mean, that's not that light, but I'll take that every day as well. I was going to say, it's not very light because while the kittens were saved, I'm sure the driver <laughs> went up in flames. Yeah, because, <laughs> like, bad driver. So, you know. Right, <laughs> what, he deserved it? <laughs> well, oh is there God. a game story here? <laughs> that's such a fucking insight to your brain. <laughs> uh, all right, there is a game story, and uh, that is that uh, we spoke about it few weeks ago uh but it looks like the switch pro is coming and sooner than we think ladies and gentlemen uh owen s good from polygon writes that nintendo could announce an upgraded version of the nintendo switch before e3 2021's digital expo in two weeks time reports bloomberg uh now i don't have a bloomberg subscription (laughs) <laughs> so that's why I'm using the Polygon article. Uh, citing multiple sources, Bloomberg says that Nintendo plans to launch the new hardware in September or October, and that system is likely to be priced higher than the existing console, which retails for $299.99 US. A mid-cycle upgrade to Nintendo's handheld console has been rumored since early 2020, with a report in March saying the unit will have a larger 7-inch OLED screen with 720p resolution and will be capable of outputting 4K resolution when docked and plugged into a television. Uh, little Will... The mm. baby twig. Uh, are you ready for a switch upgrade? Are you still on the uh, the OG launch one? I am. It's still here. I um I bought it for Odyssey, and I f- oh hello. And I feel like uh, I think it is time. Like I, the, I would love to play more games on it because I, I bought it for Odyssey and have only really played Odyssey on it. So I feel mm-hmm. like if it gets a big upgrade, it might become one of my main consoles. But it's like I, I still live on my my home consoles and PC. So I want more of an incentive to jump on this. And if it is a little bit more specky, maybe 10. Do you really want it to become your main console? Well, if I can plug it in and and it's ready to go, it's like it could Mm -hmm. become a portable PlayStation or Xbox, I guess, is what would be nice. It's it's always the dream, but I like... Mm. I'll weigh in and say, like, my biggest issue with the the performance of the the Switch is not its resolution. I know that is a huge uh, sort of... A point for a lot of people that that's the way they measure how good their games are but it's always sort of like the grunt and the frame rate for the switch mm. and i feel like hopefully they're saying here there's an upgrade in terms of the power overall but pushing to 4k for me doesn't really excite me in the sense that like nintendo games historically have never been about you know the graphic fidelity and the resolution and i can look beyond that like breath of the wild still yeah. looks amazing on my 4k tv running at yeah, 1080 totally. um mm-hmm. and it, yeah it's stunning there's there's design in there that like that complements the lower resolution but playing a game that's performing badly uh on the switch uh i'm not going to mention doom because that's mm, buttery <laughs> chunky uh but uh like there are some games that just should not be on that console that get ported there and we talked about this i think last week or maybe on the main show but that's the thing i'm more excited about that i haven't heard enough info about unless there was more in that article which i was going to joke nick that you said because i'm not subscribed to bloomberg here's the first three lines of the article <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, i haven't seen too much detail about what the actual under the hood specs uh could possibly be for this uh and just you know, going on about resolution doesn't really excite me. I'm still going to get it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm still, I'm also with uh, Will. I'm on the OG uh, and I would love a reason to upgrade and I just need some more grunt. But but Nick, you've got the light. So you've, you've bought the, the quarter life cycle console. Yes. You want, you want to upgrade. Uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, yes, I've got both. Um, I think, I think I will upgrade if it has the bigger screen. The bigger screen is a, is a big selling yeah. point for me, I think. Um, the light, uh, I've got, actually, I've got the, both here. The light is, uh, fantastic because I've never liked with the, with the OG Switch, I never like, the Joy-Cons are a cool thing. I never dock it, so I never play anything on the TV with it. So it always feels a tiny bit flimsy for me. Um, so the screen, obviously, on the Switch, which you can see there, uh, very nice, very big. Um, the screen on the little one uh, is smaller, um, but I, I play 90% of my games on the light because I like the way that it feels more. It is a bit smaller and easier to carry around. But uh, if there was a way where you could get light-sized switchiness... 
with a bigger screen or at least normal size switch with the bigger screen and less bezels, then I'm mm. definitely into that. I'm like you where I want games. I think Nintendo have always been brilliant at art design for their own consoles of knowing, hey, like I agree, Breath of the Wild, I was never like, this needs to be in 4K and I need this to look better. It, it's always the art design of Nintendo games that works. But even current Nintendo games are sort of struggling to run on it. I know that the report that came out in March talked about having DLSS, um, uh, NVIDIA's deep learning technology, that uh, will enhance low, reson- low resolution images into high resolution renders. Uh, and that's AI based, so you need less hardware. So if it's running NVIDIA technology, cool. then it can use DLSS to make it look better on the TV and hopefully better on the device as well. Um, mm. But, uh, but yeah, the, the big selling point for me would be if there's more guts in here. Obviously, if there's more guts, how much... And we spoke about this last time, but, like, how much does it hamper developers of going, well, I could... I could spec for the higher version, but I, I need to remember that most people who own a Switch will own the original Switch, mm. and so it will be less powerful, so I can't make something that doesn't run on that. So you're sort of caught in this mid-ground. But if there's a way that, like, you know, and again, not a developer, but, like, more RAM means it runs smoothly no matter what, then uh, I, will probably, I will probably take that upgrade. But I it's like buying cause... new things, and that's the real damaging part. <laughs> well, it's funny, because we're even seeing that with... Um, we'll go on to talk about this later, but with, like, the PS4 to PS5 generational leap, like, we're seeing developers being like, I don't want to leave behind the PS4, which has this incredible install base. Mm. Um, and that's, generation, that's console generational leaps, whereas what we're looking at here is still technically in the same generation of this Nintendo console. So, you're right, in terms of abandoning that to say this is the one you buy that has the little must-have, the pro version kind of thing. Uh, I think happened with the 3DS. They, they brought out, like, a 3DS Pro or something that had more guts to it. And same thing, there was, like, three titles that were like you need the, the newer version before yeah. i think yeah. the whole system kind of retired uh, and the switch came and just took it over in, in that sense what i think is funny as well though nick is that like i'm with you i I, w- I would love to buy a new one of these because nintendo products have a kind of apple vibe to just their like purchaseability they just feel like something you need in your life um part of that comes from the marketing which nintendo has always kind of misstepped on to the degree i, I love watching these ads and stuff no one plays switch the way they sell them in the ads apart from and I mean this as a compliment, apart from someone like you who dresses like a Switch player in a commercial, like I can see you on the bus ride in the morning with your cap <laughs> yep. up and you're like your funky colored hoodie and your, even your Switch light, even though you've gone for the black rubber coating one, like still looks like a fun thing that you'd throw around in your bag casually before you go, that's my flight and off you go and, and wave at the person you met playing Switch. No one else plays like that, but I'm glad that d- does appeal to someone like you. That's so true. The only lie, well, not lie, but the only thing that doesn't track on that is I have no interest spending any time with my friends. Um, and so... This, and no, that was the random stranger at the airport it. that you met. Okay, right. Mario Kart? Mario Kart. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I actually, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really dig the Switch. I just, uh, I wish there were more games for me on it than that I couldn't play somewhere else. But uh, The but only yeah, thing we'll I'll add is also that my Joy-Cons on my uh, OG, I don't know, uh, Will, if you've got this, like one of them just won't stay in. It'll always, if I push up with any pressure, totally. it'll drift. automatically. Li- no, 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 no. Clicking in. Does yours do it? It just, it just you, slides straight out. If you just gently out. push up, it slides yeah, out. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. right. lock oh, in functionality. Horrible. And part of me yeah. goes like, I only ever play it either handheld or docked. I never take the Joy-Cons off. So I would love it if the Pro mm. went with the light mentality of like, these are locked onto the actual physicality of the body, which I know they won't, but I'd love a version like that, which then either just docks or just goes, throws in your bag. Because I do that and I'll come in and my Joy-Cons half slid off, that kind of thing, which I've looked up solutions. Mm. They're super technical. I haven't bothered. So it lives docked. But yeah, a solid, solid handheld. Um, I, I can't I can't emphasize enough with the light how good it is having it all as one piece. Like it just yeah. has this like like I just feel like I can actually throw, throw it, it around in a bag. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Banjo wants to play Animal Crossing, I always give him this one because it's like I just I can literally just like hand it over and he and if he drops it, I know it's not gonna like th- have you, fall apart into three pieces. You've got the original there with you as well? Yeah. Can you just take off both Joy-Cons? It's one of the saddest things in, like, gaming history that I think once... Oh, unless no, you've got a case. If you take both... Oh, my God. If you take them both off, I just think one of the saddest pieces of hardware in history is that. that. Is that. Yeah, it's it, the it most looks like un- it, it, it looks like your it looks grandmother like a- your grandmother bought you an iPad. 
Um, oh, yes, it's like, <laughs> but it's, it's not. It's a like knockoff kind iPad. of thing. Yeah, <laughs> nothing about it aesthetically works. Like even popping it out so and resting it on a table, it's just the saddest <laughs> piece of hardware ever. So it gross. loses all personality. I, it's so sad. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, it it really is hideous. Like the the Joy Cons are very cute by themselves. Yep. Um. Yep. And then and then this is just yeah, this is total trash. Um. But uh, <laughs> look, the Switch will may not be the only mm. portable that we have in our lives because there is a rumor going around, and Sam Makovich from Ars Technica confirmed this rumor that Valve is making a Switch like portable gaming PC. Video game and hardware studio Valve has been secretly building a Switch-like portable PC designed to run a large number of games on the Steam platform via Linux, and it could supply chain willing launch by the year uh, by the year's end. Multiple sources familiar with the matter have confirmed that the hardware has been in development for some time, and this week Valve itself pointed to the device by slipping new hardware-related code into the latest version of Steam, the company's popular PC gaming uh, storefront and ecosystem. On, stu- on Tuesday, Steam DB operator Paul Juvik spotted the change in Steam's code, which pointed to a new device named, named Steam Pal. The name is a derivative of a previously discovered code term Neptune, which began appearing in September of last year, and came with a Neptune optimized games string. At the time, Curious Code Crawlers thought this discovery was referring to some kind of controller. Technically, that's true. The Steam Pal, whose name uh, we're putting in quotes because we didn't have confirmation of the uh, final name, is an all-in-one PC with gamepad controls and a touchscreen. In other words, it looks and functions like a Nintendo Switch, albeit without the removable Joy-Con controller functionality. The the device is very likely the subject of an announcement Valve co-founder Gabe Newell hinted uh, to in a panel conversation in New Zealand uh, earlier this month. There, he dodged a question about Valve's plans for future console video games with an indirect answer saying, quote, you will get a better idea of that by the end of this year, and it won't be the answer you expect. You'll say, aha, now I get what he was talking about. So, Will, mm. you wanted the uh, Switch to be your primary gaming console. What about a portable PC uh, Valve machine? It's exciting because I think I'm, I'm similar to you in terms of games. There's no games on the Switch that really speak to me. So if I can have any game on mm. my Switch, that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> I am like, so... I am so... like. I, I, I love this moment where everything is possible. There is no... Yeah. Uh, all, all that's ahead of us is... Gus is shaking his head right now. But all that's ahead of us is <laughs> optimism and uh, 4K, 60 frames per second, unbelievable handheld gaming made by some magician in Sanders. <laughs> uh, and I I am so into the idea of a... Of a uh, and right now, uh, obviously, we're seeing footage of the Steam controller, which was a huge flop. But um, <laughs> but uh, I'm so into the idea of being able to have a, a little Steam machine. I constantly am like always. I'm always about uh, like 90% of the way to buying a gaming laptop just so I can play some PC games upstairs when I'm not sitting in front of my PC. If I had something like this, where it would really well uh, either stream games from my PC or be able to like load something on there, even if it's like fifteen hundred bucks, I'm like, I will take it. I, I don't know how the technology is at the moment that you could get something running anything particularly decently. Like when we think of what PC games are, but if there was a way that uh, you could have like a hybrid of running games locally really well, but also a completely optimized like steam link machine then that is such a good combination for me and i'm so i'm so full of hope for this now angus crush my hope it's nice to dream isn't it <laughs> look in lieu of pete being here allow me to be the glass half empty and then knock said glass off the table uh, oh, by saying great. that i just i i can't see this existing with the track record that Steam's had with their hardware. Like, yeah, it totally makes uh, sense from a design perspective to say this is where we're going to go in terms of streaming games and where the future of mobile gaming is going. But I just, I can't see any proof that 
the being able to integrate PC games seamlessly with a handheld device, like the the issues for me, like streaming stuff straight to a console. I'm with you. I I want that to be the future of it. But the, just the PC ecosystem and uh, like how hot most of all those games are designed. Things like the Steam Machine was it Steam Machine or Steam Box or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like the, Steam the way Lincoln. that that promise this. Oh no, this the Steam idea. Machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steam yeah, yeah. Machine. These pre-built ones that we're gonna like run it straight to your TV. Uh, Steam Link or something as well was in there as well. The Steam Controller. Like it has the most potential out of any sort of uh, platform and company that has all this. Uh, yeah, financing and, and potential behind it. But I just, I've never seen anything come from them hardware wise or, you know, beyond even like uh, using the Valve like, Index. Steam... Valve Index. <sighs> the, Look, be- I have... the best VR headset. The most yeah, which expensive. They, but the which best. they've created and like carved out this tiny niche in the market of the most expensive, unobtainable one for like, you know, it's for hardcore VR enthusiasts to make YouTube channels about. It's not the the Oculus Quest, the way that mm-hmm. is actually something that got made and got given to the people and used in a pliable way. So, yeah, I, I like, I. No, I, I don't think when it comes to handhelds that the, 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 the Steam or the PC ecosystem of games is the right one to translate across to it because you'll have to, I don't want to say dumb down the titles that you play, but you'll have to change how you approach every game. It's not suddenly the world of games is open to you in everywhere you tra- you go. I just, yeah, I, I'm being negative for the sense that like we just you came are. off the back of Nintendo. No, I'm saying for that this is my, my reason. Coming no, off the back of something like, <clears throat> you know, like a... a a Nintendo design console or a, you know, a, a being designed by a first party sort of designed console, mm. which keeps its, it keeps its, uh, like, I was going to say keeps control over what's in its marketplace, but Nintendo might not be the best example <laughs> for that because there's a lot of shit <laughs> thrown into that one as well. But I just, as I said, like I want to dream big like you and I want this to be the, the, the next big thing, but I don't know how they're going to put the processing power into something that's small that's going to be, you know, that I'm going to want to carry around me in the way that we looked at the Switch Lite. And then if it's going to be streaming games directly to it, I, I'm cautious about how well that works. I mean, I currently do that with the PS5, but only from Wi-Fi areas. But and Steam, in Australia, we struggle Steam with that. Steam Link works really well. Like, Steam Link works uh, really, really well, actually. I use that quite a bit in the same way as, okay. like, streaming my PS5 games. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, for me, there's just uh, too many things up in the air with them. Like, there's so many variables attached to PC gaming that I just... Mm-hmm. That's the thing that, for me, goes, like, I like it when that all gets stripped away and it gets streamlined as something that I can just take safely with me in a little console. And for me, Nintendo is the other end of the spectrum for that, and that's why it works so well for what they do. And so that's just where my, like, general negativity comes from. No actual, like, you know, research done there. Just purely me... Uh, yelling into a camera mm. in the morning but yeah like you know I, I i want this to work out for you i don't want to shit on this so it doesn't for me exist. uh yeah. <laughs> for me just for me i mean it's true valve don't need this to work money wise but uh, yeah. you're like for nick i really want this <laughs> so i i did um i i think part of the part of the other appeal of something like this for me is that it's a machine that you basically get two copies of a game for one in that you can buy it, like uh, like I'm looking at my Steam library now of what I have installed. So right now on Steam, I've got installed Destiny 2, Disco Elysium, Griftlands, Hades, Return of the Oberdim, and Subnautica Below Zero. And I go Subnautica Below Zero, Return of the Oberdim, Hades, Griftlands, and Disco Elysium are all games that you could run like on the Switch. Uh, They're on, I think they will are minus Disco Elysium. I think, minus Disco, they? yeah. And yeah. so... Those are all things that can currently run on like lower spec hardware. If this was something that had higher specs than the Switch, which I think it would have to have, if it was like the Lux version of a handheld, in the same way as like the the Vita was, I suppose, um, mm. then all those things are going to run really well. Destiny might not be able to run on it, and obviously, like you could Steam link it and see how that goes. But the fact that um, uh, I could buy. Or, like all of those games, I don't need to make the choice of going, okay, do I buy it on my Switch? And then I also want the PC version, which looks way sexier, works in like widescreen on, like Subnautica Below Zero, widescreen 21.9 on my computer, looks incredible, like actually going into that world graphically. Mm. You know, I've got like a great graphics card and stuff. It's a real experience going into that. I've seen how it runs on the Switch and it's like, that is not the like underwater experience you want to have. And even when you dock it, it's like, it doesn't get any more powerful. It just gets blown up on a bigger screen. But if you have something like this, then you've got the portable version and the sexy high-end PC version with one purchase, which I think is very appealing. And then the other thing I'm going to throw out there, 
This is just a rumor, but there was talks of Gabe Newell and Phil Spencer. Uh, there was a, there was a, a rumor about Phil Spencer and uh, Gabe Newell having discussions, and there was the possibility that Game Pass is coming to Steam as uh, oh as, damn. A, as basically like the uh, like a gateway to get people into Game Pass as well. If mm. that's the case, there is a world where X Cloud. Totally. could work on this machine. And now yeah. what you've got is a PC gaming and Game Pass streaming machine. And at that point, it's like Microsoft and PC is is the only console that you basically ever need, um, particularly since so many Sony first-party games are coming to, um, uh, to PC after release anyway. So that is also, and that's all totally just a rumor, but yeah. if that was to come true, then that, like, again, that just, like, another library is added to this streaming thing, which I think is what I've wanted from the Switch for so long, is, like, put game pass on the switch i know nintendo won't do that but it's like if you could if i could play other games on this streamed to it then i absolutely would and this would be take up way more of my gaming time uh mm. so yeah that's my other hope for something like this maybe down the i guess and will i like want your opinion on this one as well the idea that like playing streamed games in australia currently like we're getting there internet wise for as much fun as it is to shit on nbn and, and all that kind of stuff like i want the internet to be better and so like it's it's take the wins where you can like I have decent internet at home. We have a good at work in between 4G is kind of average to good. Like playing games streamed on mobile consoles for me play feels like I'm like building a house on shaky foundations. Like I never feel confident mm -hmm. diving into a session, playing something anywhere outside of when I'm in a place like home or work, which I can often put a console in hopefully, which I know not everyone can. That's my, but like, do you like, Will, would you feel confident playing a game stream to a mobile PC that you're no. not going to drop? Yeah. Like this is, the feeling like, i'd like, like to download the game and have it secured on the device i'm playing on which is like yeah yeah but you can you reaction. can that's why that like i feel like that's I'm, what, I'm that's now the hope the, the shield well, but that, that's, that, that, that's what xcloud is xcloud is only mm. streaming games that you have access to like game pass games so you can download them to your pc you can download them to your xbox or you can stream them from your pc the downloaded version to your handheld or stream them from your Xbox to your handheld, or you can stream them from the cloud to your handheld. So it's like, uh, yes, if it's if it's not like working for you, but you're not reliant 100% on the cloud, you can still just download that thing. Like, yeah, yeah, I just mean for playability, it's like I've tried xCloud and I've had dropouts galore and it's like, oh, if I have full Wi-Fi, full 4G and somewhere and it just goes, no, nah, it decides to crap out. And I'm like, I don't want to yeah. keep trying with this. It, those are the things that have not, get, you know, instilled me with confidence that I go like stream gaming is here yet. And I mm -hmm. want it to be and I, I think Australia will be like one of the last places that get it running as smoothly as the rest of the world. But until then, in, like until I'm doing it on my mobile with my little clipped on controller I will be less ex uh, then I'll be excited for a, a dedicated piece of hardware to land in my lap I think yeah yeah okay uh, if any company is <clears throat> crazy enough to do it it's Valve of just going like we're just going to see what this is like and I think that the the um the thing that excites me is Valve have not been scared of like price point. Like I think the index is a good example of going like, yeah. yeah, we'll make it expensive. And I know that that's not what everyone wants to hear, but for something where I'm like, for this to work, it needs, it kind of needs to be like a console that you're just getting as a handheld. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be $200. It should have like $800 worth of hardware in it. <clears throat> but then also Steam might be willing to t sell it at even more of a loss than console manufacturers normally do because like Game Pass, it's about getting people into the Steam ecosystem. If every time, like, if you sell a console hardware on a loss, but then every game that someone buys, you get a 30% cut of, then mm. you're probably going to come out well ahead if you're Steam at the end of that. So It's really yeah, going to we'll shake up see. that Nintendo commercial of you sitting at the airport on the floor with this giant, like, black and grey moulded piece of Steam plastic casually playing totally. it before you. I don't know. It's that big in my mind. Like, that's what it is. It's like a one of those, like, Sega Game Gear kind of things. Totally. Like, I'm going to have to that's completely what it's look like. change the way that I dress. This is You've got a backpack <laughs> with, the pa with the PC in it with cables running into it, and you're like, I do not fit in the aesthetic of this ad. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Talking about aesthetics, we saw something very, very pretty at the end of last week, and that is the uh, gameplay reveal for Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, talk about this and uh, to Horizon 2 Forbidden. Very well, uh, very well done. Well, um, uh, talk about this because uh, this sort of came 
out of nowhere, we've been on the record for saying for months and months now that this <laughs> game is not coming out this year, not coming out this year. This game is definitely delayed. And while Sony didn't have a release date, they said that, uh, quote, we don't have an exact release date yet, but development is on track and we'll have an update for you very soon. Uh, we did say a big chunky version of uh of the game and will uh what do you think about this i did not play through the the first game i, I got a bit I, i've never found the combat very intuitive or enjoyable mm-hmm. and how i much started did you it, play? is that what you're saying pardon you did start it though is that what you're saying how much did i did you start it? i played i probably played like 15 hours or something like i, I was trying yeah. to get through it um and Whilst this is pretty, I don't think much has changed here. Like, it definitely looks like the same game, for mm. me at least. Uh, like, one of the big things is the combat, and the combat still looks very clunky to me. Like, it, there's not much of an impact to any impact. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know, visually as well, I guess one of the biggest tricky bits is this is also going to the PS4. And I think, whilst it's glossy, it doesn't feel all that different to a a kind of late game ps4 title Mm. um which i I mean it's it's that thing we're talking about earlier about trying to bounce between generations um so i didn't get much of a wow factor from this personally interesting i'm kind of on the same i'm I'm in the same boat like i i didn't actually play the original i know it's now i think available as like a ps plus or a ps collection uh downloadable and i Mm. want to then dive into it but i think i'm i'm going to do that with the intention of playing five to eight hours like i don't (laughs) want to like i want to see what this game is about i want to know about this world i I want to know about this character there's some people have so much love for um is it Mm. aloy i want to aloy yeah yeah uh and she looks like such a great character uh voiced by ashley birch and i'm like i i probably want to play this one more and i don't want to go hey you've got to not you don't have to get through the first game but you at least need to know where this is coming from i thought this looked like a prequel of sorts in the sense that the character looks a bit younger looking but maybe that just might have been a remodeling thing because I, I think it definitely is a sequel um and oh, 100 yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. the environment being a uh, a tropical version of a dystopian future versus the snowy tundra plains kind of thing like that i get, it does kind of appeal to me a little bit more uh i like the beaches all that kind of stuff so yeah just purely on a, a on a visual style like i, I, I keen to try it out but i'm just i'm with will i see it as a big slog of a game it knows how much of a big mm. adventure it is in front of me and uh, and again I'll, I'll i'll echo your thoughts will in terms of what i saw from this demo i think like i haven't i've played this this game in some other form in every other sort of uh way shape or form and this feels like an amalgamation of all those things that sony mm. does well for a game but no, no one thing stands out as the reason i have to play this uh mm. Nick, tell us we're wrong and why you really can't wait to play this game. Uh, I really wish Steph was here. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I am in the same boat as you guys. Sure. Um, I played Will. I played about 15 hours of Horizon as well. uh, And I could, I just, there was something about it and it was the combat. It was just that thing of like, I know uh, everyone else I talk to loves that game. And I was just like, I ju- it just does not click for me. It didn't feel intuitive. It always felt... <clears throat> I, 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 go, I go back and forth between, like, I love video games that feel completely immersive, but I also love video games that, like, totally feel like video games, where sure. it's like, I'm, I'm really just, like, putting together systems and mechanics. This sort of fell somewhere in between, and I know what you mean by the idea of, like, it's like you've played it before. Everything about it... If, feels like it knows it's a video game but is pretending Mm. to be this big like rollicking like almost uncharted style adventure whatever um i went back and tried to finish horizon zero dawn again and i just fell off it again but uh i will definitely be playing this uh again like you guys to just see what it's like i do think that it looks really improved i think that um it has the for me it had the same feeling as ratchet and clank of like amount of things on screen at mm. once is mm. higher uh while the design uh, i think the there's first no technical word for so that good. is there a lot <laughs> yeah. of the things on screen now at once are good <laughs> Den- density of something i'm sure is yeah, what it is yeah. but it, it's it's <laughs> like when like particularly when she uh, you know which we saw earlier when she walks and goes into that like sees the ruins uh I, i'm like oh it, there are there are like there are so many individual palm fronds here that there weren't in the first game there's just a 
a lot of stuff crammed in here, which I think uh, looks really cool. Uh, but um, but yeah, the world for me, I think is interesting. I, I don't like Aloy's voice acting. I really like the character, but I always like, and again, this is like such a small nit to pick, but in this, she's like running around, diving, whatever, whatever. And she's always just kind of like, has the same almost monotone, like, Oh, I've got to get over the, here. I've oh, it's that was the close. Lara Croft. It's the current Lara totally, Croft. Totally, yeah. It's the same and it's thing. Like, it's oh like, oh my god! <laughs> like you are, you're being ch chased by a robot, and you're being like, you just got stabbed with some sort of like weird knife by uh, someone wearing that mask, and you're like, ow, that really hurts. Uh, and it's just like I'll need that to find sort of cover. pulls me. Yeah. I hear the person in the uh, recording booth, but uh, yeah. but yeah. So uh, I do think that this is indicative that the game is now coming sooner than we think. Um, uh, that I don't think you sort of come out with this and then go silent for a year and a half, uh, even though Sony are in a position where they don't have many games that they can, like first party stuff that they can really talk about. They've mm. got Ratchet coming out. So it's like, you already have a big game coming in the next month. So you didn't need to put this here to say to people, hey, we've got games coming. So I think that this is a before the end of the year situation. Um, and hopefully I like this one more. I'm totally open to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I think Horizon Zero Dawn gave me that weird thing of like wishing that I liked something and then feeling bad that I didn't like it. And then I'm like, yeah. what is wrong with you, Nick? Like, why is this, why is this complex feeling something that you, it's fine to not like it, but uh but yeah. it definitely, and just to finish on that point, it like it comes off when you have that feeling of something that's been marketed and been designed in a way that feels like it should be a flagship Sony franchise that you get attached to because it does mm. everything right, in, like in the way it's being sold and the way it looks. That you, I mean, it, as I said, it's sad that like this doesn't impress me when like I don't know, so ten, jaded. Year, <laughs> ten years ago, I'd be like, <laughs> games can look like this, and now I look yeah. at something like this, I'm like, mm, yeah. that amount of polygon fish count. No, it doesn't really do it for me as much. Oh, but again, it's, it's a bigger point than that, I think. It's that idea that this feels... I, I, I'm going to probably piss people off. It feels... This game feels designed by committee a little bit for me. Like, it's doing so many uh, things that it thinks are cool when combined. But nothing feels like a natural, amazing idea for me. I, I, some people will really, mm. really be attached to this franchise, and I don't mean any offence by that. It just doesn't do it for me the same way that something feels organically like this story had to be told. It feels like... It felt like, as I said, committee being like, what are great things in other games that can be pulled together? Should they be, a, you know, greater than some of their parts? And I just don't really ever get that vibe from this game. So I really yeah. like to be proven wrong. As someone who has not played the original, I am not in the point, uh, the position to cast stone. So I will go away and play that five hours. And if I come back uh, in love with the series, then you know, I'm all the better for it. So we'll see. I saw Miss Jenkins in the chat saying, don't fully blame the voice actor, Nick. Voice actors really don't get given much direction. All I'm, I'm not blaming Ashley Birch for that. It's totally direction. Like she, I've heard Ashley Birch in video games and she's definitely yelled before. So I know she's capable. <laughs> so it's definitely down it's, to it's like- It's like that thing we talked about the other day about Mass Effect where, um, what's her name? Um, I just get it. Uh, uh, Jennifer Hale. Main, Jennifer Hale was like, they said like, scream. And she's like, in what context? And gives them like 20 screams because she's like, am I being chased? Am I being stabbed? Am totally. I just yeah. angry and want to yell at this? You know, am I excited so to see someone I haven't seen in a while? <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Just uh, rounding this out, um, uh, we did see some new stuff in the game. Obviously, one of the bigger things is the underwater stuff uh, mm. where she can swim. She's got a diving mask, which means she can swim indefinitely. So that to me was really cool of like, you've got this beautiful world above and then you go underwater and it's like again there's just tons more down there so we'll see how how much of a part of the game that that is uh she's got a ton of new uh projectile based uh weaponry there's a grapple hook called the pull caster an electric glider uh called a shield wing uh and then uh she also can um uh override machines and as we just see in the gameplay here uh start riding them as well um so can sort of like do that so i think it i think they've definitely done that thing of like the good progression of systems and adding more stuff uh for the sequel so hopefully this one grabs me more and if it doesn't then i just need to be okay with that and and know that Sorry. not everything is for me last point did we just see peeling waves on the shore I think we that did see peeling. the first waves. time i've seen a wave peel in a game like actually game of the year 10 out of 10 like that's what I'm talking say. about. That's that's amount of stuff they they added <laughs> peel. I have never seen a wave peel across a shoreline like that before. Look at that! Look <gasps> at it! Look at it go! <laughs> surfing game, ten out of ten. Make a surfing game, Sony. Mm. Please, please, please. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, 
And then we also over the weekend saw gameplay for a second huge game coming out. And this one actually got me more excited than Horizon Forbidden West, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't necessarily feel like it's doing that much right. new. Uh, that is Far Cry 6. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a gameplay trailer, a character trailer, and then an hour long uh, let's play of the game. Um, I should say at the top here, uh, our production company, Low Key, uh, does work with Ubisoft Australia. And Gus also hosts a show for Ubisoft. So take whatever <laughs> we say with however many grains of salt you feel like you need to take it with. Um, but uh, Gus, were you yeah. impressed with Far Cry 6? I'm impressed with their idea of steering this back towards fun and silliness. I think they've never completely walked away from that. Like their their stories and their, their worlds have, have always been far-fetched and stylized and that kind of thing. Yeah, but five was um, pretty fucked up. Five, uh, so I have to, I was doing this on the weekend. Uh, three, Tropical Island. Four, Himalayas. Yep. Uh, I think in between yep. that is when we got um, uh, Primal. Primal. Then yep. five, five was Montana, USA. The like Montana, religious cult. Like, yeah, yeah. Religious mm -hmm. cult in America. Then uh, like 5.5, which was, I want to say like Far Cry New Horizon or something. New I'm Dawn, just, I think. New Dawn, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Which is like the only direct sequel or continuation. Um, and that was the one that was going, hey, let's go a bit crazy here because it was like overgrown pre uh, post-nuked America, um, which I played a little bit of. And like that was over the top for the sake of like the, the antagonists and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know, this one feels grounded in, I, I get elements of, oh, Far Cry 2, I should say Africa as well. Um, the one I tried to love the most. Uh, this feels like a little more like Far Cry 2 um, in that sense that it is, looks really gritty, looks really like mechanical in the way that all the weapons, mm -hmm. vehicles and, and like, yeah, all, this part in particular, like hunting through the like jungle and stuff. So in that sense, I'm seeing the best parts of two and three, which were uh, three is my favorite by far. I've still played that the most. Um, and so I, I feel like if they if they stay with that mantra and they have fun with it, they don't get bogged down in the antagonist too much, um, which they they did. They, they stumble across it in three with Vass and they're like, oh, he becomes his fan favorite. Then I think they tried again in four, kind of missed a uh, target, wasn't as impactful and since then nothing's really been the same you didn't so like, I know that you didn't like the protagonist the antagonist in four i did i did but just coming off the back of that it just didn't carry the same right, amount. Okay. It, he was like really charming sort of eccentric and uh flamboyant uh yeah. like yeah yeah like again not bad but it's just like they've never been able to top that and here we've got i forget the actor's name but from breaking bad uh and many other pieces i'm gonna say gina carlo yeah. yeah pardon me uh Amazing. wonderful actor has done um oh is in um is in uh usual suspects as well i watched that again recently and i was like oh my god he's like a young man in that amazing uh and great actor and i'm sure will be wonderful i just hope doesn't fall into the uh this is gonna come off awkwardly the kevin spacey trap of being a uh like famous actor who gets used in the opening cut scene and you never really see again that kind of vibe but onto yeah. the gameplay yeah all this stuff looks mm -hmm. great uh the big push was obviously the customizable weapons that you can uh, like there's one in particular where you can just load rubbish and uh, different items into users projectiles with humorous uh, you know results uh, and in that sense yeah it looks chaotic looks fun and I like that there is a strong diversity in the fact that they've got a city towns jungle you know it does look like they're sort of going the whole gamut in terms of the the island setting so yeah I'm excited but you know far went I've always been for a far cry game so no big surprise there will do you like to kill people with the Macarena? Well, almost the opposite. I like the fact I can put my gun away. That excited me when they're like, if you want to blend in, you can just put your yeah. gun. I'm like, if I can walk around with no gun, that's exciting. You sweet, innocent, that's pacifist what... twig. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I uh, totally agree. Yeah. It was, just, it was the one feature that it... Because you, you're always awkwardly in those games, constantly talking to an NPC with a gun in their face. And I'm always like, I really feel sorry for you in this well, moment. Well, as you're doing that, the sound of blink. Blink, blink, blink of a, like a bad <laughs> yeah. guy driving. Someone's behind noticed you, you. Going, hey, you're you're the enemy in the game, and yet they disrupt things. So actually, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, those are, and then obviously also the companions. Uh, like the dog was enough. The, what did they call him? Uh, Chorizo. Look at that dog. I think this is Chorizo. Oh, God. Yeah, uh, and then and of course the the new edition of the alligator. Like uh, one of the worst. Well, the, the thing I never enjoy is AI gun people following me around. So if, if instead sure. I can have a as a small dog or a, a large crocodile or alligator. That's very exciting as well. And I, and like you keep saying, Gus, I'm glad they're going back to fun. When the trailer ended with her 
saying it's fun that yeah. just sealed the deal for me of, of an already great edit of a trailer and then mm. yeah, landing it really nicely. And I I love the setting of this. Um, mm. We'd seen some of the trailers like that that Giancarlo Esposito reveal trailer uh, where there was there's like the riot going on at the bottom. That's of the building right, fully and cinematic sun at the top. trailer. Yeah. I think. Um, and it uh, and then it and for that it was like oh that's interesting that there's a city here because there's normally not really cities in Far Cry. There's like little village outposts and stuff. Uh, and I thought it might just be for the trailer and some cutscenes, but it turns out that it is a huge part of the game that they've built basically a country. Like there mm. are there is all the jungle, there are the small villages, and then there's a capital city and stuff. And so taking what Far Cry does, which is lots of hunting, lots of like um. Uh, um, emergent gameplay when it comes to wildlife, uh, the way that you string weapons and uh, like setting off enemies and distractions and all that sort of stuff together. And then how that applies to like an urban environment is I'm really interested in seeing how that works. I love the aesthetic of the whole thing. Like that sort of Cuban, the cars, everything feels like hot and covered in cigar smoke. It just has that, <laughs> like that warm feeling to There's it. There's a fedora on the dashboard of every car you get in. You're like, well, oh, totally, well. yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, like, the weapons, the weapons look cool and fun, but it's just about this whole aesthetic. It, it, it really. It really comes off like a world that I want to spend time in. So I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really keen for this. I didn't also, realize how keen I was until I was watching it, and then I went, yeah. oh shit! Actually, this is to this is the kind of open world thing that I really like. Also, like the Far Cry games for me have always been central around like an island nation or an island paradise or you know the fact that the original far cry was on a tropical island uh then you kind of got lost in the whole like far cry instinct uh which yep. was like the weird xbox 360 port same kind of thing redesigned but always on a like tropical humid island with like you know fun vehicles and then three perfect version of that like all of that and from there they're like oh far cry can just be this like license that we then just find new and interesting locations but nothing's ever like it, they, the gameplay always felt built around that biome and then for them to go like oh we're gonna go into like the the snowy mountains it was like I, I never had the same level of fun i still enjoyed that you know primal didn't really do it for me and then montana was like i think where they really hit rock bottom in the sense of going like this is just a generic open sandbox world like it was pretty and it had some interesting elements to it but on the whole it was just kind of like open roads and fields and it just it didn't have the same kind of like Literally, the name implies a far cry away from wherever, you know, like, and mm. for me, that is always is kind of like epitomized by what we're seeing in six, which is like, yeah, island kind of nation with all those, you know, you can have all those urban, urban environments, port cities, all that kind of stuff, but you still need to be able to get in a Jeep and just fang it into the jungle and get lost in there and, and that kind of thing. So I think that's what I'm really excited about. It's like a return to form of what they do well. Uh, and when you, when said, you said when you said islands, because the Far Cry Two was Africa. Like most of the games haven't been on islands. Far Cry Three was an island, but like Far Cry Four was the snowy. But do you mean like do you mean more like um, unique contained um, wilderness biomes? As, which which is what like I feel like Montana had less of, which was yeah, it, it did feel like a place that we are we always see in video games. Whereas the rest of the games was like. It was Africa. I think it, it may have been Nepal for three, but um, but that idea of Nepal like, for four, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for four, yeah, of going oh places that you don't normally see in video. Games. Yeah, and maybe four was interesting in that sense. Like I played a lot of four, and I did really like it. Uh, two being in Africa was interesting, but it didn't actually play well for the environment it was in. Like the whole yeah, first yeah, yeah. half being in those big savanna areas, like it wasn't actually a fun place to be. Uh, and it was yeah a far cry in terms of from where we've seen game set before. But I just think they nail it. The idea of like islands can be really uh, undulating there's water features everywhere it, it's got thick brush and then it does feel like you're going on this kind of like chaotic holiday like you're going to a paradise lost kind of thing and so <laughs> i feel like that's what i what i'm drawn to with that series even if i'm just being nostalgic for the sake that the original one is like a man coming out of like you know submerged uh you know uh not heart of darkness what do you call it apocalypse now style with the machine gun on like a crystal clear beach like it just that's that's what far cry is to me and so i think like there's a little part of my brain that's like ah, oh, it's back to that uh yeah cool yeah. 
So excited. Yeah. <clears throat> I am super, super excited for this uh, as well. Um, something else I'm excited for and uh, did not see coming is a new um, Final Fantasy game. And that's because it is being reportedly made by Team Ninja and they are working on a Souls-like or um, Nia. Uh, is it? I always forget. Is it Neo or Nio? Neo, I think. Neo? Neo. Neo Neo-like Final Fantasy game. So Imran Khan from Fanbyte reports that rumors on Reddit and uh, Reset Era report that Square Enix is working with Team Ninja, Koei Tecmo's in-house development teams behind Ninja Gaiden, uh, Neo, and the latest entry in the Final Fantasy fighting game series, Dissidia NT2, uh, develop a game akin to uh, Neo or the Souls games and suggesting it takes place somewhere in or adjacent to the world of the first Final Fantasy game on the NES. Yes. Uh, our sources, uh, and this is fan by uh, talking, have corroborated this rumor and suggest the name of the game is Final Fantasy Origin. Uh, the game, which appears to be exclusive to PlayStation 5 with a PC release date further down the road, will be one of Square Enix's tent poles at their upcoming E3 trade show. Uh, for whatever reason, several large chunks of the updated June show have leaked out including the Final Fantasy Origins logo and demo plans. Square Enix hopes to release an alpha demo this summer uh, to solicit feedback from audiences while the game is still fairly in a fairly early state. This demo, like several other major demos, has its own title of Stranger in Paradise. Expect the title to play similar to Neo or other games in the genre, but may be more accessible to a wider audience. Uh, Nick, I don't think anyone on... Yeah. Well, I was going to say, usually throw to one of us. I'm like, Nick... You are the newest to Souls games in the longest of running. Like, do you want another Souls game? Like, a, a Souls like? Do you enjoy every other version that hasn't been Dark Souls three? So I no. So I love like I love well I love I love Dark Souls. I love Bloodborne. I love Sekiro. Uh, Sekiro least of all of them, but I still love it. I really liked Neo two. I really really liked it. Um, I played that game. Uh, I loved that game. It was incredibly complex in terms of like there was so there was so much more to think about when it came to the fighting system with stances and there was just there was tons and tons in that game but i really really liked it uh it played like a dream and the idea of i don't need it to be brutally hard but the idea of something like that in a final fantasy world is really appealing to me because it means that it's potentially like pulling back from the sort of JRPG grindy stuff and giving you more of like a action game that is longer because it is more difficult to get through and not longer because it's like, hey, we've just got a ton of like, go out into this world and do these fetch quests because I really want to be interested in the Final Fantasy world. It's Mm. just these games take up so much time. Final Fantasy Remake is probably like the closest that we've gotten to something like this. Even like 15 was like... I wanted that to be my Final Fantasy game and it was still just like, oh my God, I'm so bored by so many of these quests. So if we get rid of that and do more of that Neo style thing, I am so heavily, heavily into this as an idea. Um, so uh, yeah, that's me. What about you? Well, I'm, I'm, look, I'll say my, Will, have you played Final Fantasy? I was going <laughs> to say, is this, I haven't is this a way that you're going to get into? I, I don't want to yeah. let the cat out of the bag too early, but like, do you, I'm trying to remember, have you played any Souls games? I haven't played any Souls and I haven't played any Final Fantasy, but I've been intrigued by both. So this might be the way that I play, dabble into the fantasy world and also play a Souls like. Um, yeah, I don't know. Watching this footage now, I wish I played Neo as well. This looks sick. You, uh, yeah. you, you, you would really like it. Like it's a great, it's a great game. Neo had yes. a bit more of an approachability to it, I believe, didn't yeah. it? Like than maybe Dark Souls. From I, uh, I only played a little bit of the first one, and it had like a very strong tutorial. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. They're happy to yes, teach you things here. It's less esoteric than Dark Souls is, um, but yeah. it is just as hard, if not harder, because there is tons more to think about while you're doing it. Um, yeah. So yeah, and you would hate it, Gus, because it is just UI up the wazoo. <laughs> I played a bit of the first one, and I just I, I couldn't get into the fact of how much was being thrown at me. You were seeing here, like even just like hit numbers and all that kind of stuff. I know there are other games, but you know this will bring me to my point, which is that like the more Souls likes get made, even if they are from from software the Mm -hmm. less I'm into the genre. Uh, Probably less to do with the difficulty and the punishing combat and more to do with the the design of the world and the way their stories are told. Like, for me, Mm -hmm. the strongest part of Dark Souls um, and the series, but 
you know, that is my favorite in the whole thing, is the way it approached its storytelling. And it was incredibly minimalistically it uh, in, in a minimalist way, it in such a mysterious way that felt like there was a game that had been lost within the game. Uh, and you had to really work hard to, to drill down, not only in the, uh, like in the gameplay, but also just like finding out in that lore. So that's mm. what a souls like is for me. And I find, I'm not saying people are wrong when they say this, but for a lot of people, souls like comes down to third person, uh, melee combat with attack patterns and, and really, really hard enemies that, are, you know, hit you for a lot of health. Um, I know that's not, generally what it is but that's what i think i see emulated in a lot of games that call themselves souls like and that's great Mm -hmm. and i think it's a great genre that exists and i'm glad there are other games in it and i've dabbled certainly with uh even your non-traditional third persons like uh, i've played like top downs and uh you know all sorts of other types that are like this is a souls like and they feel great um like salt and source salt and salt and sanctuary and salt and sanctuary thank you hollow knight yeah all of that kind of stuff and i really enjoy the difficulty there but for me uh the final fantasy universe does not intrigue me in the slightest because it is the definition of this like confusing convoluted over explained uh and over designed a little bit so like that's not a reason i would want to get into play it and if i do it's probably to watch it like a movie or to like watch cutscenes and have turn-based combat that kind of thing so for me personally no the, the i if it's a good game that feels fun to play, I'll definitely give it a shot, but it's not a reason for me to to explore the Final Fantasy universe. I think I saw Whimsy Bobbins in the chat say this is 100% why I, not why I play Final Fantasy games. So I'm sure there'll be a big player base out there who are like, the action, the immediate one-to-one combat is not a reason I enjoy these games. It's for, you know, story and world building and that sort of stuff. So yeah, a few few different things thrown out there. But again, for me, I this just makes me want to go back and play Dark Souls again and just have that pure experience. But I'm such a wanker when it comes to all those nostalgic, mm. you know, like, oh, it did it once right. I never want to see it emulated again. So uh, yeah, take that with a giant grain of salt and sanctuary. I- I think it's um I think it's a good move because like team this is team ninja right so this is not a this is not a studio that works on mainline final fantasy games so this it's not like this is and replacing who great action as far games. as we know like <clears throat> yeah totally and this isn't replacing a final fantasy game we're still getting that new final fantasy game that looks exactly mm. like the kind of final fantasy games that people love uh i, I think that um and i to- i totally agree with whimsy bobbins and i totally get it about the idea of like this isn't why i play final fantasy games but i think that that's why they're making it because they're going like we want to appeal to a group of people who don't normally play our games and if they like this then they might get into the law side of the game because obviously the combat is most likely going to be completely different than you see in, mm. a, in a regular Final Fantasy series. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I think it's a really good move that they're sort of going with something that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Like the idea of those two words, like Final Fantasy is a genre unto itself and Souls-like games yeah. are a genre unto themselves and you've basically now mashed two genres together and that is oftentimes when some of the most interesting stuff comes out so totally and don't get me wrong i think as you said it's good this isn't replacing any game i'm okay with it to exist in that sense because final fantasy of all things i could see them and they have in the past explored with different genres and different play styles and that kind of stuff as well so you're right if it opens up new players to that that universe then it's always a good thing um but i don't think people who i personally don't think people who are diehard souls uh like obsessed Yavadi videos and all that kind of stuff are possibly going to be as excited about this then, you know, because it might come off as a slight sort of like reworking of a very, very specific genre of game. But yeah, mm-hmm. we'll have to see. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. And uh, it sounds like we will hear more about it at E3. So very, very soon. Uh, something else we're hearing is that uh, Sony is doubling down on the success of their uh, putting PlayStation titles on PC. Days Gone was a relatively big success uh, on PC for PlayStation. And as a result, it looks like we are going to get Uncharted 4 next, uh, or potentially next. It looks like we're going to, at the very least, get Uncharted 4 coming out on PC which is probably uh, the biggest move that Sony have made uh, with this. The rest of their, like Uncharted is an iconic series for the PlayStation brand. I think Days Gone, Horizon, these are exclusive titles that you have to play on PlayStation. But Uncharted, I feel like is 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 one of those games that PlayStation uh, defined the PlayStation uh, uh, 3 and 4. 
and that they will be uh, making the move to uh, PC as well uh, based on a presentation released for Sony's Investor Relations Day. Uh, Uncharted 4 appeared on a slide under the heading More PC Releases Planned. Uh, Also on the slide was Days Gone, which hit PC last week. Uh, This was all lumped under the idea of new growth ventures. So I think that from from the looks of things, it looks like it is ramping up in terms of uh, <laughs> Sony going, we need to do something akin to what uh, Microsoft is doing in terms of like taking market share. And I think the thing that has always been the push for PlayStation is the strength or, or at least over the last couple of generations, the strength of the exclusive. And now that exclusive is still an exclusive on a PlayStation, but if you know it's coming to PC uh, soon, then it could be something that you hold out for, but you're still it's still first party titles. It's still money into PlayStation's pocket. Will, you're a big Sony fanboy. Uh, are you worried about the idea of this sort of like watering down the PlayStation hardware brand, or are you excited that uh, more people are going to be able to experience it? It does confuse me because my one big argument has always been like, oh, I'll buy my PlayStation so I can play my PlayStation games. And now I'm like, do I need my PlayStation for my PlayStation games? Like, <laughs> what what does this mean for the future of, like you say, of the console and everything? It's like, I'm, I'm very much a couch gamer, but if I can just, like, pick up my PC and move it where my couch is and play yep. my couch games... Yeah, it's it's strange. As long as it doesn't hurt the games themselves, I guess, is the worry, because a lot of these games are going from a console to a PC later on. Like, it's been a, a, a decision, I, I'd assume, later in, in the game cycle. Whereas I, I wonder what will happen when they're developing a game for basically two different places. I know, like, there's lots of ports of games, but I don't know, this feels a little bit different than that, than a port. I don't know. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. That, uh, that yeah, like, like you're basically developing for P uh, for PlayStation hardware, and that and the, the other thing that is always so good about the like iconic about the PlayStation exclusive like this is how mm. it's it's like Sony have secretly given uh, Naughty Dog they've unlocked a part of the PlayStation Four that no one else has access to. Yeah. Power wise, what I'm worried about <laughs> is when this goes onto the PC. How do I shake my controller to bring my torch back? Can I? I can't shake a mouse. Shake your, to shake bring your my PC. Co- I, yeah, just shake yeah, the whole console, the, oh, whole, the whole PC. Yeah, yeah, that's what. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Gus, are you uh, like you know? We've been seeing this happen more and more now uh, with the Sony titles, but Uncharted, uh, Uncharted Four, definitely the biggest one. Mm. I look. I just think what I find interesting is that they've decided to put four in as the. Obviously, this is uh, a flex in the sense of Sony wanting to show off uh, their best looking games in an environment or on a platform that can be utilized to upscale and, ma- and make these games look really great. It's, it seems more about, yeah, showing off the power of these games and, and in their best light versus going, hey, let's release the Uncharted collection and let's like, you know, let's find a way to bring people who might not have ever dipped their toe into this series. Uh, that's f- just like my outside opinion would be the idea of making the whole series available for people to say, that's how you introduce someone who's never bought a PlayStation before into a series. Whereas what I see here is that people who have played Uncharted 4 going, I'd love a reason to play it again. And I'd love to have an, and what that reason might be is me being able to upscale it and, and do whatever graphic fidelity tweaks I can with my absolutely, you know, bitch and home PC kind of thing. Mm. So yeah, I, I find it interesting. I don't quite know the answer to that. I find like their choices of titles days gone, obviously a more recent release. So while not maybe the prettiest game, it still probably had the most flexibility to be able to be uh, tweaked. And like uh, Will said to have, the the tools open to them to say how can we you know do things like ultra wide screen support and and you know everything else that's capable on a pc so uh, yeah i i feel like if they go down this path i would like to see them open more than just these sort of select shiny games because sometimes for me they're not the ones i enjoy the most uncharted 4 amazing game but like i want to back catalog it on my pc if it's going to be if it's going to take over not so much takeover, but it's going to be a place that I'm going to double install or double purchase a game. Um, I want more than just a couple of these sort of key titles. So, yeah, it'll be yeah. interesting to see what they pick next, I guess. I mean, I imagine that'll be something that if this continues to work out for them, then they will do that. But mm. um, but I, I would say that the reason they picked Uncharted 4 is it's the best example of what Uncharted can do. It's not necessarily everyone's favourite 
uh, game. That'd be two, I think, it, I think you're talking about. Yeah, like two. <laughs> two is probably my favorite, but four. I can't fault four. Like I adore four. I totally. think I just adored two so much. But by four, I knew what I was getting, and so the shine was off a bit. But I'm still like, it is a phenomenal game. I can but, fault but four. But I think if it you made released... me feel too much, I didn't want feels in my hand. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but if you if you wanted if you wanted if they put out one and two, like those aren't necessarily like touting the power of the PlayStation. They're just really fun games. Like mm. by, at, at this point now, whereas four, I think, still holds a bit of that. Like it it still holds up. Graphically, uh, it still looks really good. And that part of what they could be doing is um, potentially the opposite of what I was saying before, where they're going, okay, we're going to put these games there. And if you buy them on PC, that's great. But it could be pushing people back towards the platform of going, look at what you're missing out on by not having a PlayStation. We're yeah, going to put out the flagship things and we're going to put them out Obviously, in the case of Uncharted 4, years after they came out, but in the case of Days Gone and... Uh, um, uh, uh, did, 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 what's the one you love? Sorry, Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah. Much shorter windows between release <laughs> and uh, sure. when they come to PC, but it's still like you have to wait. So if they then go, you know, Ratchet and Clank, for example, is going to come out in a week's time. Everyone's going to be talking about Ratchet and Clank. PC gamers know they're going to be able to play it in a year, but everyone's talking about Ratchet and Clank now. You know. And you played Uncharted 4 and you were like, oh, actually, yeah, maybe I do like the kind of games that they make. You know, it pushes mm. you to buy some hardware. Mm. So we'll see. It's an interesting experiment that they're doing. But I, I was not expecting them to continue this cadence of release, I guess. We got we got Death Stranding. We got Horizon. We got Days Gone. They're talking about Uncharted 4. All of this is happening in the space of, like, under a year. And these are some pretty heavy hitters from the Sony catalog. So, yeah, it looks like they're... they're they're taking this pretty seriously, which uh, which is exciting to see. You're right. Is it, are they dangling the carrot to say like, cool, <laughs> now come and actually play them on the place where the, the, the rest of them are, that sort of thing. They're not going to go, let's try and front load our, our, our library onto the PC so we can try and just capitalize. Yeah, as you said, it's it's trying to get people to come and play in the, the place they're designed for. Totally. And it's like, Close come social. buy that console that no one else can buy. Uh, <laughs> the the last couple of things that um just from this story came from the investor relations slides uh, that they were presenting. Uh, some interesting facts uh, that the PlayStation 5 is, uh, Sony mentions it's building their biggest ever platform with PlayStation 5, and it's working hard to ensure the longest ever tail with the PS4. The PS5 delivered PlayStation's highest ever launch sales with 7.8 million units sold as of the end of Sony. Sony's last financial year, which was March this year. So that's 7.8 million PlayStations worldwide. Uh, for context, PlayStation 4 sold 7.6 million in the same time frame. PS3, PS3 sold 3.6 million. Uh, so the PlayStation 5, despite all the uh, supply limitations selling very well, obviously, when you can buy it. Uh, they also, uh, some of the demographics are changing for PlayStation 5 as well. It reveals that there's a growing interest in PlayStation gaming among women, with the proportion of women among console ownerships increasing from 18% with PlayStation 1 to 41% with PS4 and PS5. So almost half of PlayStation console gamers are women, uh, which is a uh, pretty fantastic stat uh, to have there. And that they expect the PS5, while they have been selling it at a loss, uh, will start to break even from June and make a profit soon after. So that whole thing of like how PlayStation is willing to sell at a loss their hardware, uh, mm. you know, it doesn't, <laughs> from, from this at least, it doesn't last that long until you do start actually making bank. So, again, reiterating the idea that, like, if Valve want to take an even bigger hit on that, it's not like they'll be paying it off for the next 10 years. Uh, it could just be a couple of years and then they start getting their money back. So uh, some good things coming out of PlayStation, which is good. Uh, and then finally, some weird things coming out of Sonic Team. So uh, <laughs> Sonic had a live stream at the end of last week, which again, I don't want to shit on people's yum, which I think is the expression. Uh, <laughs> but um, But it was just like... I don't know why we're still trying to make Sonic happen, but we are. There was a lot of stuff announced, including a remaster of Sonic Colors called Sonic Colors Ultimate. Um, there were lots of Sonic things being added to other games. The most disturbing one was Sonic being added to the um, Tokyo Olympics title as a, <laughs> as a costume that a competitor can wear yeah. and, and run in. Um, 
Sonic's been added to like Lost Judgment, the PlayStation game. So it was lots of like, it was basically like an announcement of skins in multiple games or like little Easter eggs until obviously Sonic Colors Ultimate. But the very end, when they ended the stream with a 30 second teaser of Sonic running through a forest uh, and sort of he gets pixelated feet uh, and leaves a glowing trail that forms a circular pattern um but gus no will rumor. i don't care for sonic <laughs> no, 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 but, the movie <laughs> okay 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 cool yeah. let's start with will then because the rumor about this uh yeah. is that what that game is is an open world sonic game with ubisoft style towers set on a gloomy grassy uninhabited island dotted with ruins featuring an XP system with a skill tree that oh lets you unrock abilities like Spin Cycle, which seems to be what Sonic just did there in the trailer where he runs really fast through a forest. Is this <laughs> the Sonic game that you want? Look, I didn't grow up as a Mario boy. I was All I played was Sonic. That was my mascot growing up, Sonic and Crash. So I'm not going to lie, a little bit, like just for how insane of an idea that is, like that feels like, very un-Sonic. It's the one thing... I mean, there was kind of your Sonic Adventures or whatever where it was more 3D and he'd run around in places. Like, there's been versions of that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't know. They can make, like, a AAA-looking Sonic game that kind of that has, like, Ben Schwartz as the voice. Like, I'm, I'm in. I, I don't mind. <laughs> like, Sonic has I been this forever so if, if you can do it well i'm, I'm not against it <laughs> sonic has been this forever and like rarely successful at it in the last yeah. 20 years um i i actually think the thing that is holding sonic back is a need to make him run <laughs> that <laughs> that it's the only defining thing about him yeah. but it's yeah. also the worst part of most sonic games is this yeah. like feeling that he has to have constant momentum but in order to have constant momentum and have any level of difficulty, that momentum needs to stop at some point. And that is, yeah. I would argue, the worst feeling in video games is when <laughs> Sonic stops running <laughs> is actually my most hated thing that happens in a game. So yeah. if you just went, okay, we're going to completely re-examine the idea of what Sonic is and make him like uh, Ellie from Uncharted from uh, The Last of Us, but just an animal wandering around a forest trying to, like, get back to his people or save tales or do something. Yeah. Yeah. At least it's, like, an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's so strange because, like, yeah. I, and it's tied to the fact that when they made this mascot in the, like, the, what, I'm going to say, like, early 90s, their catchphrase for him was, gotta go fast. So, Nick, yeah. you can't have any game where he is not doing that because he will <laughs> not live up to his iconic catchphrase. Whereas... Nintendo made the right move of making their, ca their mascot's catchphrase, it's me, Mario. All he has to do is show up and he's he's fine. He's ticked the box of what he has he to do. He stayed true to that catchphrase. Totally. He's, oh, he's always saying it. He's always being there. Can't, yeah. can't fault him. It, to, uh, I just want to say that the, what we're seeing on the screen is the uh, development team on the animated series. And it looks mm. like a boy band that have grown it up It really does. Gats. Like, <laughs> so there's some strange things. Also, like, I think the CEO of Sonic is Ivo, which is Dr. Eggman's real name. So it's a full on Bowser situation for oh Nintendo. God, for Nintendo, it is too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my so God. There's, there's a lot of revelations throughout this live stream. Yeah. I mean, what if it's. It, what, if, yeah. what if something terrible. What if Sonic lives on an island and there's a there's a catastrophic event that is threatening the island and the game is about um, him getting everybody off the island? And the tagline is gotta go comma fast. <laughs> and so there's a clock on getting off the island and, and so it still timer. stays true to the idea of what Sonic is, <laughs> but it's not he doesn't need to run around and collect uh dumb points. Yeah, semantics and punctuation are what's gonna save this series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like onto onto the games and, and the idea that like even just seeing Sonic put together in a in this Sonic Central announcement, like 
for everything I don't like about the games and never really grew up loving them, like, like from a design perspective, he is such a strong mascot. He works so well in like profile and silhouette and all these mm. little elements of him, the stark contrast, the red and the blue. Like there's a reason to love him and put him on backpacks and, and make films about him. But like, yeah, when you come down to that core gameplay, like you said, Nick, it's just never that satisfying of a feeling. And they haven't been able to like even recreate what was in the originals. They've re-released the originals. They come up with uh, Sonic, Gener- no, not Generations, what was the the fan made one that got turned into actual Mania. new adventure? Sonic Sonic Mania. Mania. That yeah, was, was the close... last good Sonic game. That yeah. was the last good one, and Decades. it was essentially someone going, "Here's the original." I wonder if like doing this open world gritty, <laughs> what do they say, like a gloomy forest or something? It's like yeah, it didn't say gritty, thing... but it did say a gloomy, grassy, uninhabited island <laughs> dotted with ruins. Oh, don't don't go gritty with Sonic. <laughs> oh, of all games, funny. that literally like. But, but I will just add, to add to that, the only thing I've ever seen uh, that seems to be able to translate the speed of Sonic games from the original platforming uh, into a 3D one is a fan-made game called Sonic Utopia, I believe it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, have a look at it in your own time. Like, it's the... it's. It's a fully open, like, uh, Green Hill Zone with a little 3D camera behind. Like, the the inertia and the speed and the way in which it looks like you can maintain that the whole way through a 3D platformer looks insanely fun to play. And I've never seen it in any of the actual released or, you know, your colors, your Sonic Hedge, uh, Sonic the Werehog and all that kind of stuff. Like, they've never been able to get it right like this fan-made game has. So, maybe if that gloomy Ubisoft-esque one has some of that movement to it, then it'd be a reason to play it but besides that it needs to be a cartoon and a movie and, and not a game but that's someone I mean, who used made- to that's someone who used to draw pictures of mario beheading sonic to get pictures <laughs> in the super nes magazine letter segment that's a real callback to anyone who remembers them did you ever get it in there no in no the and i drew really good ones like i, I drew really well graphic as well as decapitations and i don't understand why they weren't published in their children's <laughs> Look, magazine they put in more graphic decap- <laughs> ones that are worse and i'd be like oh my god <laughs> So yeah. Um yeah, interesting. Interesting seeing what's coming with Sonic. I don't know. Like <laughs> I I reckon take a swing. Like take a swing and do something totally yeah. different because it's just it's not really it's, it's maybe people are still playing Sonic, but it's not like the thing that it used to be. So I think that you're right. The fact that he's so iconic is a testament to the fa- to his design, really. That mm. we still go, oh yeah, that's a cool character, and he's, he kind of always will be. Plus, they made like a noir film out of like Detective Pikachu. You know, if mm. you took that kind of angle, where and and will like you're saying, like the Sonic movie is funny. Like yeah. he, that character is 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 different than the obnoxious Sonic that we see in video games most of the time, where he's just like super cool all the time. Like this, uh, that's that's at least an, an angle to approach. So yeah, which again is we'll a say- testament to when they designed him and they made a really cool <laughs> thing that didn't talk, and then they're like, make him talk. He's like, I love hot dogs. I think was it like what he did, and they're like, oh my god, just like straight off the bat, like they did not make this thing interesting outside of it, how it looks to draw in your yeah. your. your books at school that's it yeah there was no there there so hopefully there will be a there there with this uh sonic game coming in 2022 all right that is it for the news we did it there is literally no other news that you need to worry about that was a big one